May peace and blessings be upon you, my friends. Welcome to Storytime with Miss Giraffe. Assalamu alaikum, reading buddies. Welcome to Storytime with Miss Giraffe. I'm very happy to be here with you today. First, we have a special salam, but not just any kind of special salam. We have a special salam to a whole people, an entire land, a very dear place to me, a place that is very dear to the hearts of all Muslims and non-Muslims around the world. A salam to people who are a symbol of pride, power, and perseverance. Today's special salam is to all the people of Palestine all over the world. Assalamu alaikum. Palestine is one of the most beautiful, sacred, and precious places in the whole world. So today, inshallah, we are going to read the story, Baba, what does my name mean? A Journey to Palestine. It's a beautiful book. If you have a copy of it, go grab it so you can read along with me. Bismillah. Baba, what does my name mean? A Journey to Palestine. Written by Rifq Abid and illustrated by Lama. Johari. My friends at school asked me what my name meant today. I proudly proclaimed it was an Arabic name, but then I didn't know what else to say. When Baba tucked me into bed that night, I asked him, Baba, what does my name mean? What Baba said next was like a gust of wind that propelled me into a magical dream. Samida. Samida is an Arabic word for one who is patient, persistent, and one who perseveres, one who will fight for their rights without any fear. We named you this because you are a Palestinian. Your name carries the weight of a nation beloved to millions. The historic land of Palestine is a wonder to behold. And I think now is the perfect time for its story to be told. You will first need this key from my necklace, your right to return to your ancestors' homes. You must treat it like gold. Now close your eyes and imagine with me. Do you see a white dove perched over there on a majestic olive tree? Her name is Salem, the dove of peace. You will fly with her on tonight's journey. Ahlan wa sahlan, Samida. I am delighted to take you across mountains, hills, deserts, and plains, all parts of Palestine's unique terrain. Let's start in Ariha, one of the oldest cities in the world and the lowest point on earth. We can grab a bicycle from the main square and ride around town so you can see what this unique city is worth. Its terrain is very flat, unlike the rest of Palestine, which makes our bike ride easier in light of the extreme sunshine. This is Tel Sultan, an ancient staircase. Do you want to go to the top? Let's have a race! Banana groves and palm trees for as far as the eyes can see. All thanks to Ariha's wonderful mix of heat and humidity. Now brace yourself for the magnificence of the next city on our journey. I guarantee you will be left speechless by its historic beauty. Welcome to Al-Quds, the capital of Palestine. It is a holy city treasured by many faiths and home to the holiest of shrines. The grand golden dome glistening in the sun is Qubbat al-Sakhra, housed in Al-Aqsa, a mosque with astonishing architecture that fascinates everyone. It was built in the shape of an octagon with eight equal sides and has marble and mosaics that adorn it with pride. Look over at the ancient stone walls built to protect the old city. Walk along them and see a breathtaking view. There is nothing quite as pretty. In the historic souq, you will always find young men hastily pushing carts with stacks of sesame bread called kaik, an al-Quds delicacy. It tastes delicious on its own or stuffed with za'atar, 
baked eggs, falafel, tomatoes, and pickles, and then wash down with some hot mint tea. Now that you have had something savory, let's head north and sweeten things up with a slice of kunafa, a famous nebulous treat. It's a cheesy dessert drenched in syrup made with shredded wheat. Then you must use Nablus's one-of-a-kind olive oil soap to wash off your sticky syrup fingers. It is handmade from all natural ingredients and doesn't allow any impurities to linger. After that delicious treat, let's relax and fly along the Mediterranean coast to Yaffa, a gorgeous city that Palestinians fondly call the Bride of the Sea. Salam! Yaffa is where my family is from! Baba always tells me his funny childhood stories from before our family was forced to run. Like one day, when he was playing hide and seek with his friends down the street, he hid behind the clock tower in the busy city square, and a seagull flew over him and pooped in his hair. He also told me how Yafa's famous oranges taste like a dream, and how my grandfather's friend Abu Raja published the newspaper Palestine. You are right, Samida. Yafa was a city bursting with culture, a strong Palestinian force, just like the next two cities I will show you a little further up north. The first is Haifa, which had a central seaport and railway that made it a beacon of diversity, bustling with activity. And do you see that magnificent mountain standing tall above the sea? That is known as Mount Carmel, and it is filled with caves, hills, and all kinds of trees. The second is Akka, whose historic old city has a famous Khan, known as Khan al Umdan, which was a shelter made for traveling caravans. It also has an ancient seaport where we can hop onto a boat and fare out into the sea. You can even ask the captain to play your favorite melody. Ya Zarif al my favorite folklore song. I want to dubka my heart out and celebrate the homeland for which I long. With each step and stomp, I feel incredibly happy and strong. Since you are already skilled in Dabka, Samida, I want to take you to Gaza and stop by Hajj Mahmoud's carpet shop, where he will teach you something new. Gaza is known for its hand-woven carpets, a creative craft you will now learn how to do. This wooden loom, which has hundreds of strands of yarn wrapped tightly in place, is what we will now use to create your own carpet to showcase. Pay close attention to what you are about to see. We will outline the map of Palestine from the river to the sea. Now let's quickly head east to Beit Lahem before the sun sets, where we can catch its popular Christmas parade, one you will definitely not forget. If you look over there, you can see Manger Square, that is where the parade will be, next to the Church of the Nativity. Red, green, black, white, the colors of Palestine illuminating the night, shining down on young scouts, playing Arabic tunes on Scottish bagpipes. I know the perfect place to wind down after all the excitement from our sparkling night. Let's head south to the historic city of Al Khalil, where we can sit in one of the two unique minarets of the Ibrahimi Mosque and gaze up at the moonlight. There is also an old souk with beautiful arched roofs and what looks like alleys for days. It is filled with glass and ceramic souvenirs that never cease to amaze. Salam. There's a man holding a long iron pipe with a flame on the end. 
What is he doing? I can't comprehend. Actually, Samida, you have stumbled upon one of Al Khalil's ancient crafts. He is a glass blower who uses inherited skills and techniques to make all kinds of unique glass. Al Khalil is famous for its pottery and ceramics too, which are made in a color that distinguishes them from all other cities a brilliant royal blue. It also boasts sheepskins and leather goods which make the best shoes. Our journey has now come to an end, so I want to leave you with the symbol of Palestine. As my final surprise, a superhero kufiya cape that you can wear with pride. I also want you to have this hand-stitched Palestinian thobe or dress. The design and style are unique to Yaffa, your hometown from which you were dispossessed. Salam, I know what my superhero power will be. I will fly all around the world and open people's minds using my key. I will unlock all the truths about Palestine and educate everyone about its true history. Through persistence and perseverance, I know one day we will be free. When I opened my eyes, I excitedly exclaimed to Baba, I love Palestine! Yes, Habibti, I know, he sighed. Isn't it divine? My homeland is so heavenly. Why must I yearn for it? That is why we named you Samida, my love because one day you will return to it. Insha'Allah, Baba, as soon as can be. But until then, can you tell me what made me a refugee? Baba took a deep breath and smiled softly. Let's save that conversation for tomorrow's bedtime story. To be continued. The land of Palestine is important to people all over the world. Before the Muslims used to pray facing Mecca, they used to pray facing Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa in the city of Al-Quds in Palestine. So that makes Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa our first Qibla and the third holiest site to Muslims. Palestine, or Palestine, is famous for so many amazing things. It is a land known for its beautiful art, history, food, architecture, culture. One of the most fascinating things about the art of Palestine is the art of tatriz or stitching, like what I'm wearing today. It is our duty as Muslims to do everything we can to support the amazing people of Palestine. We always keep them in our sincerest du'as and we do our best to help them and support them. The land of Palestine is precious and special to every Muslim around the world. A person doesn't have to be Palestinian to speak up for Palestinian rights. Prophet Muhammad wasallam said that the believer to the believer are different parts of one body. So if one part of the Muslim body is in pain, the rest of the body should support them, should keep them in their dua, and always empathize with their pain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the people of Palestine with victory, freedom, and peace. Ameen. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's story, inshallah. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and share the video with your friends. Stay healthy, awesome, and with strong iman. I'll see you next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel on YouTube, join me on Facebook, and follow me on Instagram. Jazakumullah khairan for stopping by. Assalamu alaikum.